fiduciary to the planning commission. Uh, our second item agenda is public comment, and we are taking public comment at this time on items that are not on the agenda. If there are members of the public here who wish to speak on any items which are not on the agenda, uh, will they raise their hands and make themselves known at this time? Are you here for Calistoga Road? It is on the agenda, yes. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, seeing none, I will close the open public hearing and move on to the scheduled attenda, uh, agenda items. Item 3.1 is a public hearing for parcel map for the Calistoga Cottages subdivision at 408 Calistoga Road, file number MIN 22001. And we have present online uh, contract planner, Mike Janusek, who will give the presentation. Uh, before we go on with the presentation, I should uh, ask for any ex parte disclosures. And I'll start by saying I did visit the site and have nothing further to disclose. I have not visited the site and I have nothing further to disclose. Uh, I visited the site years ago and I have nothing further to disclose. Um, okay, with that, I think we can proceed with the uh, presentation, Mike, if you wish to move ahead. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Chair Carter and members of the committee. I'll go ahead and share my screen and get going on the presentation. Can everyone hear me okay and see my title slide? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so this is the subdivision committee report presentation for Calistoga Cottages. Uh, tentative parcel map. This is at 408 Calistoga Road. I'm Mike Janusek and I'm a contract planner uh, with M Group. Um, has, uh, so the project description, sorry, I'm kind of losing my place here. Okay, slide two. So the project description, uh, this is for a four lot subdivision of a, an existing um, roughly an acre um, parcel into four lots. Um, the purpose would be for future single family residential development and the existing home um, would be retained on lot one. Um, so as uh, worth noting and as detailed in your subdivision committee report, there's a project history of uh, previous entitlement. And on June, so in summary, um, on June 26, 2014, uh, the Planning Commission adopted an MND mitigated negative declaration, um, as well as a recommendation to council to approve a general map amendment and a rezoning, um, as well as an improved uh, and approved tentative map for Calistoga Cottages. Um, those actions were appealed uh, to council on November 18th, uh, count, uh, 2014. Council denied the appeal and approved the project. And the second reading of the rezoning ordinance occurred on December 2nd, 2014. Um, so the, um, the MND um, was adopted. The map amendments um, became effective and are the current conditions today. And then the, however, the tentative parcel map uh, was not exercised and has since expired. And the item before you today is um, has not changed the scope of work and the proposal is the same as what was approved um, in 2014. The site is located in the northeast quadrant of Santa Rosa. Uh, here's an aerial view. Uh, the site uh, backs up to the Sequoia Elementary School property. Um, there's an existing single family residence um, at the at the front, the left hand or the west uh, side of the site along Calistoga Road. There's also existing trees uh, predominantly uh, along the uh, perimeter of the site as well as uh, through the middle of the lot. And here is the general plan um, designation and the zoning. The zoning is R16, single family residential, and that's um, the implementing zoning district for the low density residential uh, general plan 
designation, um, all of which were an outcome of the 2014 entitlement package um, surrounding the project is uh, more low low density residential R16 to the west, uh, very low density um, RR20 to the north and east, and um, public institutional RR40 uh, designation and zoning to the south. Uh, the uh, parcel map before you, again, it's, it's the same as in 2014. There are four lots, um, one, two, three, and four. They range from approximately 8,000 square feet to 13,500 square feet. Um, there's also a 24 foot uh, wide driveway at the top of the screen uh, along the northern property line, um, and a, as well as um, um, a, a hammerhead um, configuration of uh, lots three and four that would uh, allow for fire turnaround. Uh, here are the lot sizes, and that meets the um, the minimum 6,000 square foot lot size of the R16, um, and then the proposed density um, would be a little over four units per acre, which um, is consistent with the the maximum allowed under the, uh, the low density designation. Um, excuse that. That should not say add slide, but this is an additional slide than what was in the, the packet um, because there were uh, four um, public comments um, received uh, prior to the meeting. Um, a couple of them were after were provided as late correspondence, um, hence the, the note to myself. Um, but uh, the topics range from um, traffic related to apartment development, wildfire risk, and tree preservation. Uh, Multi-family dwellings are not a principally principally permitted use in the R16, um, and there's no proposed development at this time. Um, the intent is for um, single-family residential development at a later date. Um, and then as far as tree preservation, that topic, um, there's information in your packet in attachment six is the, um, the mitigation measure and uh, monitoring reporting program, and that's um, from the adopted MND and mitigation measure um, 4A uh, pertains to uh, tree protection. Um, there's also an arborist response letter um, to public comments related to tree preservation in your packet. Uh, as, I've, as I've mentioned, there's a previously adopted MND and the, uh, the project was fully analyzed um, by the previously adopted MND, uh, which was um, adopted by resolution number 11, uh, 11676 in 2014. And there's no, um, there's been no changes to environmental conditions on site, and there's, uh, there's no changes in, in uh, the scope of work. Um, and with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the subdivision committee grant approval of the Calistoga Cottages Minor Subdivision. Um, thank you for your, uh, your attention and happy to answer questions. And the, uh, the applicant has representatives um, in person. Okay, do we have any uh, questions from the staff, from the committee for, for John or for Mike? Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, then we'll have we'll open the public comment period on this item. Um, and uh, Crystal, can you? Of course. Um, if uh, you are in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. I'll call on you, and then I'll ask for you to state your name for the record. Um, you'll have three minutes to comment, and I'll have a timer on the screen for you guys uh, that'll alert you when your three minutes are up. Okay. Uh, let me get to my screen. Okay. Um, okay. 
Okay. Uh, let me. And I did see your hand for okay. uh, the sweet lady in the back there. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Corinne Villagianti. I live at 5227 Monteverde Drive, which um, is one house in from the pump station. Uh, I we see all the traffic on Calistoga Road when uh, the morning school traffic comes and the afternoon pickup. It is really difficult to turn right or left on Calistoga Road. And so we have a serious concern and feel that if there is to be some development that the developer should put a traffic light uh, there on that uh, intersection. I'm concerned also because the proposed development at 408 is literally one house in um, off of Monteverde and Calistoga Road. So you have four homes that potentially have two cars apiece, and that's eight cars that can come into uh, the traffic going right and left. Um, since all of this got proposed in 2014, we now have a 99 unit housing, affordable housing on the corner of Highway 12 and Calistoga Road. And this is a major concern because now we have seriously increased traffic. Um, I don't know how many of you were around during the fires, but I left my home and I sat. It took me forever to get across Calistoga Road and go to the left. And then I sat in front of that school, in front of 408 Calistoga um, Road for over an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I didn't move. I sat there. So what's going to happen when the next fire comes? And we've got a 99 unit housing development on the corner of Calistoga Road and Highway 12. And the problem is these fires, when they come, you can't go right to towards Maria Carrillo. We had three fires coming down. You couldn't go left down towards Kenwood because the fire was coming that way. The only way traffic could go was to the left down Calistoga Road onto Highway 12 and to the right. That entire community, you're talking Fountain Grove, Skyhawk, um, St. Francis, everything has to funnel through there. You think it was a problem in the glass fire? Think again when we have 99 units on the corner. And then we also have 408 Calistoga Road where they're trying to get into traffic. This is a major problem that I think the committee needs to consider. Thank you. Would you like to go next? My name is Karen Grandall, and um, I live in 5220 Monteverde. So I'm right next to this lot that's going to be developed. And um, my concern, I mean, all that. And my also concern is more personal because as this road goes in, it's going right by my property, which is already. Calistoga Road is rushing by, and it's no privacy whatsoever into my lot, which I, it, so I just, I don't know, it's just, it just bothers me so much that this is happening. Okay. 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 Yeah, do we have any other comments? Hi, I'm Lynn denley Bassard, and I live at 5232 Monteverde Drive. The back half of my property touches 408 Calistoga Road. Um, during the glass fire, that whole area was an ember zone for the fire going across behind St. Francis. And that ember zone means that there are four inch pieces of wood flying through the air at 40 miles an hour, heading for all the homes a mile away. And this home is also a mile, less than a mile away from that 
state designated fire hazards, very extremely high fire zone. So they recommend that in that ember zone, you do not build any homes within 30 feet of a major tree. And I have two major trees on my property that are shared with 408 Calistoga Road. They're right on the property line. They are 20 feet tall. The two on the corner are owned by Kenny and Karen Grandall, and they are 30 feet tall or 40 feet tall. And that lot that's on the northeast side um, is impacted by all four of those trees. You wouldn't want to build a home under there in this location in eastern Rankin Valley. The trees themselves are on our property. They are rural residential zoned. All of the tree protections under 1724050D say that you can't pave, you can't trench, you can't irrigate. There are a whole lot of prohibitions that say that those trees are protected. And those rules apply to both public and private land. It is not restricted to just public land. Now, I know that the city has a waiver with the developer for liability, but that waiver only is valid if everything is done correctly. If the city chooses to ignore the fire danger or ignore the fact that these trees are probably going to destroy the foundations of these homes if they're built on top of them, then the city will be liable. That waiver is not going to be worth the paper it's written on. I have an alternate plan, and that is for two extra lots. If they're done parallel with the first two lots, then that leaves a 30-foot space behind the third lot and along the north side. That can be a common area fenced off for everyone, for a dog run, for a playground, for a picnic area where you can put lounge chairs and a picnic table. It becomes an asset for these three homes, and it protects the trees and keeps the homes away from the fire danger. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> we live at 5220, which is right next to uh, Monteverdi. So, Kenneth Grandel. Um, so, um, I have a couple. Um, there's two of the big trees she was talking about, and they, I, it looks to me on the map that they've got a parking space in there. There's no way they can not disturb the roots of those trees because the canopy interlock so that's supposed to be the protected area so there's a parking space right there and uh, so that to me should be eliminated even if this proposal goes through the other thing i talked about at one of the other meetings was we're really highly concerned about a fence they said it's required but i don't trust anybody i've been lied to so many times by the city over the years um, that, but that's, I need a requirement that there's a solid fence, not just a chain link fence or something you'll see through, because we need a sound barrier there. Um, because it's going to be, we're surrounded by three, three driveways now if this thing goes in on Monteverde, Calistoga, and this one. I mean, we've got, we've got no protection at all. Um, so we need a solid fence along the property, not necessarily in the back, probably, but at least along where the house is. Um, and the other thing I had, oh, um, I don't know what they're recommending, but it would be nice if or propose that they would be single story houses, because there's no two stories around there at all. And it would be really obtrusive people right next to it to have a two-story house there looking down on our property. That's basically all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Hi, my name is Robin Anger. I live at 5239 Monteberry Drive. My concern is that lot is not a full acre. That lot, if you have a fire and have 
have a fire truck going around? How are they going to maneuver with four houses in there? That's a big concern because the glass fire, I thought our house was going to go. It was so close. So it's very scary. And then you have three other schools <coughs> north, and you have the school next there, and then you have all those apartments going in. You have the community, and there's a lot of traffic. So it's it's really concerning for all of us. So thank you. Do we have anyone else? Looks like we have all of our commenters. <laughs> all right. Well, if that's all of the public comment, I'll close the public hearing. Um, do we have a representative of the applicant here today? Um, can we ask you to give a brief description of your project and perhaps respond to some of the design questions your neighbors had? I will. Um, my name is Charlie Trubulsi. I'm a civil engineer on the project. Um, some issues I can uh, address and let you know what we were able to uh, work out. Uh, so let's start with the ones we can uh, work on. Uh, privacy, fencing, I think we talked maybe a year or two ago. Right. Um, but for those of us that, that weren't part of the conversation, uh, let me tell you what we can do and with the city's permission we can do more. At a minimum, the city requires that we fence, use a solid wood six foot fence on the perimeter of the site. With the city's approval, they let us go up to eight feet, especially mm -hmm. if, if the neighbors request that. Mm -hmm. And not to get into the minutiae, but the eight foot can be six foot solid with two foot lattice. And in the past, the city has been okay with us doing that. And if that's your desire, I think at the end of the hearing, the city will probably say, you know what, if that's what the neighbors want, then it's okay with the developer to do it at his cost. They usually 99% of the time go along with that. On uh, the uh, uh, fire issue, um, I got burnt out once, and the second time I almost got burnt out, and I lived just up the road from you. The fire came to the retaining wall of our property. So uh, you don't need to worry about uh, me being insensitive to that because it, uh, it touched home. Uh, what I can tell you is um, the fire department uh, looked at this site and analyzed it and came up with a conclusion that uh, if we provide, they call it the hammerhead turnaround. It looks like a hammerhead where you're able to get to the end of the road and the fire truck can make a turn, two point turn, and the third point he's able to get out. So that's that the size of that driveway meets the fire department regulations. And in fact, the fire department asked us to use their detail and their regulations to assure that the fire truck, if needed, God forbid, can get to the end of the road, turn around, and get out. Now that's on the, the, the micro level. On the macro level, as far as the overall policy of what should be done, you know, should any houses be allowed to be built? Uh, uh, can anybody build within this zone or that zone? Frankly, that's above my pay grade. What I do know is that the fire department, along with the city staff, along with the city council and the planning commission, have said that if you take certain protective steps with construction materials, with sprinklers, with providing turnarounds, will allow you to continue building. So that's maybe it doesn't satisfy you, but that's what I can tell you. We've done what we can uh, above and beyond what the city is requesting. On the uh, traffic, Again, the city has a traffic engineer that analyzes every project that comes through for uh, adherence to what the city code is. And um, I'm not the traffic engineer, but they came back to us and said, look, uh, three lots on Calistoga Road uh, with the volume of traffic that's there now doesn't warrant uh, a signal mm -hmm. or any special treatment, if you like, above and beyond what you're doing. Can you cite the date of that traffic report? No. You have no idea how many crashes there are. We can't. I drive on it uh, every day. I've seen it. We can't, we, we we can't have additional comment yet. Yeah. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the entrance of the driveway is uh, most of the time is 20 feet. In this case, they asked us to make it 24 in order to allow a car to pull in and a car to pull out simultaneously so that 
nobody is hanging out onto Calistoga Road. So uh, on the traffic front, uh, that's what I can I can tell you. And on the the trees, uh, the trees are an asset uh, for for the neighbors as well as for the future homeowners. Um, I know we talked about uh, preserving the trees along the, the property lines. We talked about uh, providing drainage because uh, the drainage comes towards us and you wanted to make sure that we provided yard drains to pick up the drainage. Uh, we, the city required, like they do always, uh, an arborist report. We're going to adhere to the report. The arborist will be on site if there's any changes to direct the contractor so that uh, the trees can be preserved. Uh, uh, the trees are an asset. They're, they're beautiful trees. Again, I drive in front of this place every day, and it's an asset for your, your community as well as for this project. As far as single story, two story, uh, there isn't a guarantee that they're going to be single stories, but there certainly is much more of a demand for single story homes these days than two stories. And the lots are certainly large enough to do easily uh, 2,000, 2,500 foot uh, single story house. Um, and the range, uh, the realtor is telling me they're in the million dollar, million two range houses of that size as a one story in a nice neighborhood like this in this, uh, this part of town. So not a guarantee, but uh, the, it's not like I do a lot of projects that have tiny lots where you don't have an option except to go up. So whenever a client has the option, nine times out of ten, they do a one story. Uh, to frankly purely selfish market reasons that most of the people in this room would probably prefer to live in a 20, 2,000, 2,500 foot one-story house than a two-story house. I think uh, those are the notes I took. Can you, um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, what's the maximum grade change on the, on the site? It looks like it's pretty minimal. The okay. pads are about it's fairly flat. Yeah. I was looking at the contours. It's a fairly flat uh, uh, subdivision. So, uh, uh, frankly, in the last 10 years, I don't think I've worked on anything flatter than this. So, we don't have any grading retaining wall issues like most of the projects do these days. Okay. Um, is there anything, Jessica? Go ahead. I, have, I have a quick question. Um, and this is probably for staff. Uh, so, this Mike Swan. Yes. Um, Question about traffic review. Um, was uh, this updated new project referred to our traffic division? Um, and if so, did we receive any comments from them? I can quickly check the file and get back to you if there was a, a referral to traffic. Um, unless Cleve, I see you there. Do you have a, a recollection if that's within engineering? I haven't seen an updated referral. I just know the the original traffic study was performed in February 20, 2014 with how any okay. findings that the signal was needed. And okay. I'm, uh, I'm, can you introduce yourself? Please? Yeah, I'm Susie Murray. I'm the original, I was the planner for the original project and I'm now the supervising planner for, for current development. Um, and I just checked when that discussion was happening and it was, referred out, the new project was referred out to traffic. The, the application came in originally in 2022. Um, that's when it was referred out. Thank you. Well, that's, if there's no further questions, I'll ask uh, the committee if someone would like to make a motion. I do have a further question before okay. we go. Um, and I think maybe just a bit more of an explanation from staff on how traffic studies are generated and what they look at in the future, uh, because they do look at future build out of the area. So uh, addressing the concern about the fact that there are 99 apartment units there that likely came after the traffic study was performed. Um, can we talk a little bit about how those studies account for future traffic impacts? So the current traffic study that was performed would take into account the trip generation and then access to the site, but then any new development would trigger a new traffic study updating it based off how many units are going in, how many cars are hitting the road. Um, and then that updated traffic study would make findings whether or not improvements need to be made at the intersections, roadways need to be widened, um, any other improvements uh, would be based off those updated findings on whatever new proposal comes in. 
and the, this is something that's provided by the traffic engineering city. So the, the private developer hires their own consultant traffic engineer. They perform the study that gets referred out to our in-house city traffic engineer who reviews the study. If any figures need to be updated to current values. That would have been the study on the 214 MND, right? So for this particular iteration, it was determined that that study was still appropriate and adequate at this time. I'd have to look at what our traffic engineer responded with um, from that, the most current referral. Um, I don't have that handy on me, but I could try to find it unless Susie has it ready. I'm looking okay. frantically over here. <laughs> and then I think specifically the question as the traffic study went through in 2014, when it analyzed the site on the corner, it accounted for the, the densities and the build out of that site through that traffic study. I mean, it may very well be a question for the applicant too, uh, but that is typically how traffic studies work. They, they look at the future of vacant lots and then they're making assumptions about unit build out. So it becomes more of a maximum. So they look at a worst case scenario. They look at the general plan in the neighborhood and project what's going to be coming in the next one, five, 10 years. As a footnote, and Gabe, maybe you can confirm this, it's extremely rare for the city to require a traffic study for, for projects that are less than 50 units. I understand. Uh, so just to give you a sense of perspective, uh, but P.S., uh, before I forget, uh, to make it official, uh, we'd like to propose uh, the eight-foot fence, six-foot with the two-foot lattice, if it's possible, when it comes time uh, to add or amend conditions. We'd appreciate that. Well, there is a condition requiring that the landscape plans be submitted. That's where that would show up. So. Correct. Correct. Any further questions, comments? want to make a motion I can make a motion um, so I would move to approve the Calistoga cottages uh, minor subdivision uh, way further reading um, actually I would, I would like to add a condition I know we've got the condition there about landscape plans but I think with the the applicant seems willing um, and to address the concerns that were raised about privacy, uh, to add a condition of adding a perimeter fence, uh, six foot solid with two feet of lattice. Okay. Great. Um, any a second to that motion? I second. And, uh, any discussion? I, I will say that um, you know appreciate. The neighbors concerns about uh, development in the air in what was once a rural area but I, I believe the project is it's certainly compatible with the regulations we have to evaluate the project it's compatible with the general plan and the zoning it meets our engineering requirements and with uh, submittal and review of the landscape plans of the best practices for fire prevention and the design of the driveways have been Taken in, have taken into account emergency access. I see no, nothing, and nothing has changed since the previous approval. So, I will be supporting the project. So, Crystal, if you call for the vote. Thank you, uh, Committee Member Jones. Uh, yes. Committee Member Offer. Aye. Chair Carter. Yes. Let the record reflect that we have all ayes. So this uh, this uh, minor subdivision is approved. Uh, the resolution passes with three eyes. Um, any actions of this committee are appealable to the Planning Commission. And um, this action is final unless an appeal is filed to the City Clerk's Office within 10 calendar days of today's decision. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Get to a devil. Mm, yeah, a little form. <laughs> <laughs>